This is five on your side at six, focused on you. We begin tonight with breaking news at St. Louis University. This is a live look at campus where right now pro-Palestinian demonstrators are gathering at the clock tower. This demonstration has been planned for days. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Ann Allred. Five on your side's Robert Townsend is there and joins us now live from Spring Avenue and Lindell near the SLU campus. Robert. Hey there, Anna Mike. Let me tell you right now, the official start has not begun here for this pro-Palestinian protest. And as I step back, you can see lots of folks gathering here at the university's clock tower. So far, we're seeing more than two dozen students mainly gathering here at the university's clock tower. Many of the protesters you can see are wearing neon colored vests. A SLU spokesman telling me they do not know exactly how many demonstrators are expected to attend the student organized rally, but I'm told most of the people again who show up for this event tonight will likely be students, apparently anti-war protesters who plan to speak out against the October 7th Hamas attack on southern Israel that killed at least 1,200 people. Now the group Occupy SLU organized today's protest here on the private St. Louis University campus. Mayor Tashara Jones telling us her administration is aware of the protest. She says she contacted Police Chief Robert Tracy and SLU's administration to, quote, reiterate the city's support to protests. To show support for this protest. Officers from SLU's Department of Public Safety, they're also here. We're watching them. They are armed and they're wearing vests. They're keeping a close eye on this demonstration to ensure that it is a safe one. Again, as we continue to go on the air, even now I'm watching this crowd continue to grow. Lots of folks are also still walking around the campus as it's just a normal evening here. It's pretty quiet right now and we're watching every minute of it and it start officially the time supposed to be six o'clock. Again, nobody knows how long it's gonna go, but we're here keeping an eye on it as well. Live on the SLU campus, I'm Robert Townsend, five on your side. And you can watch a live stream of the protest on Five Plus and on the Five on Your Side app. You can download it for free on Roku, Amazon Fire, or Apple TV. It's been a difficult time for the Jewish community as they watch continued protests on college campuses. Five on Your Side's Megan Kernan continues our coverage outside of St. Louis University. She spoke with local rabbis who are making their voices heard. And that's right, since Passover just ended yesterday, this is the first time we're hearing from rabbis about those protests at WashU. Tonight, they tell me they remain optimistic about the protest that's about to start right now at SLU. Rabbi Jeffrey Abraham at Congregation B'nai Amuna in Creefcourt says his concern with WashU protests was the people not involved with the school who came onto the campus. He's hoping SLU will be able to keep those non-students off campus tonight. Rabbi Jordan Gerson at WashU Halal says they're prepared to offer emotional support to students after tonight's protest. As we learned from the WashU protest, um, the majority weren't even WashU students. Uh, and so, you know, these are just groups that are trying to be agitators instead of um, doing what's actually right for our larger community. My hope is that the SLU administration will do the right thing. We just will offer support to any Jewish students and any other students who feel threatened or, um, you know, need counseling following that. Both rabbis are hoping tonight's protests will be peaceful and don't end in violence. Live at SLU, Megan Kernan, five at your side. Just hours ago, eight days of testimony wrapped up in the Thomas Kinworthy murder trial. He's accused of killing St. Louis police officer Tamaris Bohannon in August of 2020. Defense attorneys say he should be found not guilty by reason of mental defect. Our Christine Byers is live in downtown St. Louis, where prosecutors fought back against that claim today. And Christine reports that the prosecution star witness believes Kinworthy is faking it. Christine. That's right. Dr. Rachel Springman took the stand today and told jurors that Thomas Kenworthy was pacing, looking around the room feverishly and trying to always bring back the conversation on his self-reported symptoms rather than answer her questions during her interview with him. And she says in her 12 years of forensic psychology, that's not typically how a mentally ill person acts. And she says it felt like a performance. Kenworthy has been on trial for eight days for the murder of Officer Tamaris Bohannon. Two psychologists testified for the defense, saying he was experiencing an acute psychotic episode at the time of the shooting. 
Dr. Springman reviewed their findings and listened to 30 hours of jailhouse calls between Kenworthy and his loved ones. She says he did not sound like a man with a severe mental illness during those calls or during her interview with him. To use a sports analogy, there are times when in basketball or in soccer, a player is trying to draw a foul and they do what's called a flop, where they dramatically fall to the ground, they're writhing in pain, um, they elicit the foul and then they pop up and they're fine. That's what this performance felt like. Now, defense attorneys did shoot back at Dr. Springman, saying maybe it's the fact that her father is among the highway patrol, that might lead to some bias on her part. And they also said she never interviewed Kenworthy's loved ones. Now, both sides will have their chance to make their closing arguments tomorrow morning at 930. Live outside the courthouse in downtown St. Louis, Christine Byers, five on your side. Right now, rain is trying to form in parts of Jefferson County. Here's a live look at Arnold from our sky cam, mostly blue skies. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell has the weather first forecast. Scott? Yeah, we're looking at our radar scans right now and looking farther to the south. We definitely have showers and thunderstorms. They're going to try to develop a little farther north here this evening, but right now your weather first Doppler radar showing some pretty good downpours here, especially in Reynolds County and then heading farther to the northwest from there going up just east of Rolla right now. As we track these storms for you, you can see there's no severe weather, no warnings, no advisories, nothing like that, but there are downpours, some cloud to ground lightning, particularly right now as you go down towards Johnson shut in State Park. What's around St. Louis? Not much. Looks like that's biological there drifting off off in western Jefferson County and we'll watch as this area tries to move to the northeast but we're past peak heating so that means anything we see later on this evening into the overnight hours becomes much more isolated and the chances for rain go down. So some evening showers and thunder, especially southwest of St. Louis, limited rainfall and coverage overall. But if you're under one of those storms, you're getting a downpour for sure. Widespread showers arriving Thursday night and that unsettled pattern lasts right into the weekend. More on that coming up when we see you in 12 minutes. Later this year, Missouri voters could raise the minimum wage and guarantee paid sick leave. Today, labor unions, fast food workers, and small business owners traveled to Jefferson City to deliver their petition signatures to put that question on November's ballot. Our political editor, Mark Maxwell, reports from the state capitol. Changing the Missouri state constitution takes an awful lot of hard work. But this crowd... When do we want it? Yeah. They put in the hard work. To get these signatures from over 200,000 Missourians. And on this day, the first of the month when they usually check the mailbox. The rent is due. Yes. Yeah, yes. rent due today. They made a delivery of their own to the Secretary of State. Families deserve sick pay yes. and they deserve a living wage. Inside these boxes, 210,000 petition signatures. According to Missourians for Healthy Families and Fair Wages, voting yes on their ballot question would give roughly half a million Missouri workers a raise to $15 an hour and guarantee at least one week of paid sick leave to nearly three quarters of a million full-time workers without any. I've got three kids and one on the way. Among the crowd, a number of working moms. My bills don't take a day off, so I can't either. Alejandro Gallardo earns $14.75 an hour, prepping food alongside his co-workers at a restaurant in Colombia. They come to work sick because they have no choice. It's that or miss pay that they need to pay their bills to pay their rent. St. Louis janitor Eugene Hubbard sees this as a unifying political issue. I, I don't look at this as a Democratic or Republican issue. This is about the people. How would his life change if this passes? For me, I can spend more time with my grandkids and school them, bring them up the same way that, that uh, we wanted to live, have a better life for them. But the job's not done yet. We got to get ready to go to the ballot box and vote this thing in. Once those signatures are certified, the November ballot will start to take shape. And on Friday this week, hundreds of abortion advocates will make the same journey to Jefferson City, bringing with them tens of thousands of signatures to put that big abortion question on the November ballot, too. Reporting in Jefferson City, Mark Maxwell, five on your side. Coming up, new details about the resignation of Wentzville superintendent. The information we learned from police. Plus, connecting St. Louis's neighborhoods through nature, the trail that will eventually connect four parks.